I got this thing from Ableton. It's uh, called Move. It's a new controller, synthesizer, standalone, fun machine. And for me personally, I think it's uh, it's actually quite could be a nice addition to my life set um, where I'm running Ableton anyhow. You can connect it via link to Ableton, so it's always in sync, very easy. It has Wi-Fi, it has an audio interface, it um, has four sound banks, um, drums, whatever. It's all the synths you know from Ableton inside. And um, it's very quick and very hands-on, and I think it's uh, actually a lot of fun to just play around with it and see what's going on. It's like a creating machine, um, if you will, a bit like if I might say this, like the OP1 from Teenage Engineering or something, but in a different form factor, a bit more simple, if I may say this, and uh, therefore more hands-on and direct. You can uh, edit all the synths and the drums uh, very basically. You have a microphone where you can sample um, your own voice or resample things, which I really like. And you can uh, export and import sets from Ableton by the uh, Ableton Cloud, which is also very handy. Um, there's like there's a, um, a website to control all the stuff. Um, but for me, honestly, it's like it's about starting something new and actually to say this at the beginning, a very nice feature, you start a new set and you get a random choice of sounds. And that's actually really fun because you wouldn't usually do this like, like they choose it. You can also uh, control Ableton with it, um, switch to a controlling mode, which I haven't used that much because I don't think it's very good for that, if I might be honest. Um, also, or let's say I don't need it for my use. Um, and uh, what I really like is it has uh, sensitive pads, which are also uh, have aftertouch, and uh, you have like 16 uh, step sequencer here. Um, you can nudge notes, you can edit notes afterwards, you can like velocity, um, length, da da da, everything. Um, obviously, it's polyphonic. Then it has like a note repeat function, it has a arpeggiator. Actually, very rudimental uh, arpeggiator, but I guess the, the software updates are happening. Um, you can play the drum rack as a drum thing, but you can also use a full range keyboard for it. You, it has obviously like Ableton has the scale function, so you can play in different scales like Freegan, Dorian, whatever. Um, and um, I must say it's the first time that I actually use a controller like this to play in notes because I play keyboards usually and I'm still learning, but I see the point and it's actually quite fun um, to use it. I'm starting a new set, which is very easy. You just press a button here on the set page, and then it selects you uh, a couple of, like, like a drum kit, right? And then you have like a, usually it's a, a sort of bass synth, and then you have a, some keys and a polyphonic thing. So that's like really random. Like you start it and then you're like, mm, I actually, I like the drum kit, but I might like to change this sound so I can go in and there's like tons of sounds and obviously more coming. So let's say we use this one, then you have uh, effects on all the sounds, like for instance the delay, which you can edit of course, or you can do uh, redux, basically it's effects you know from Ableton. It's like a bit crusher. I don't hear that well here. Then there's a phaser, flanger. And it has, as far as I know, there's like um, the wavetable synth from Ableton, Drift, and some of the classics like Analog and Simpler, obviously, uh, on a very, in a very uh, rudimental form. So it's, you can edit it, obviously you can't do everything, but it's like all on these uh, really nice to to uh, work with uh, knobs. You can touch them, you see what you're changing, which is quite handy. You have some 
like really simple functions to change the sound quickly and everything else I think you can do later in Ableton, which because you can export these sets, what you're doing to Ableton, a bit like the Note app that Ableton provided on for the iPhone. And um, it's quite a simple thing to just create. Actually, one thing that's really fun, you can play something because you're just playing around with this and then capture it. It has a capture function like in Ableton. Does a, a rough checking the tempo for you, so this is 86 BPM, and uh, then you can play along with it. Going to uh, full velocity. As I'm not really good in playing um, keys, you see I do the quantize function, I know exactly where the button is to quantize it. So beat, then let's say we want to have a different key, that's uh, we go to D minor, my favorite key, and uh, where's minor? Minor blues. Sounds good. Quantize it. Then sound. You can change the loop length. I wish here, I wish I could edit the, the loops a bit better, but as far as I found out yet, I can only, um, I can only edit um, the, the end of a loop and not like, you know, let's say you have something captured about 16 bars and you want to use the last eight bars. I didn't find out yet how to do it. Maybe Ableton tells me later. But that would be it would be good to have this nice option. That sound doesn't suit me. Let's see, they have some guitars, why not? Let's use the arpeggiator for once. different patterns so that's just the one let's say I want to have a different drum pattern but I want to copy this one so I can go in here you can have I think eight eight patterns per session, per project or per yeah, project. And um, one thing I actually really like, you can now resample things. So let's say I let this uh, just a beat and a beat in the bass and I go in here and I'm gonna don't use this one, so I'm gonna resample here. Uh, resampling. So now it's here, very loud. Then you have some playback effects here, which are really can obviously 
start starting point, change the starting point. I didn't find how to change the end point, which I found a bit disappointing. Also, I found it a bit disappointing that um, somehow the when you resample, there's always like a little latency in it. So when I play this, for instance, I put that on the one now. You hear this? So you always have to kind of like fine tune the sample starting point. that easy and I think they need to overwork this um, because it's actually a super cool tool if you have something running and you resample it and then you get this as a basic basis to change some other things so now I could just have this and use the base for another sound or something like this um, to have more options and actually the effects that you can use on the sample are actually quite nice to do weird things for instance let's do the uh, is it time stretching so there's this like thing i did yesterday uh, at night which is a bit like dubby style slow house and um let's say for instance so you have this um chord thing so you can see you can edit the filter envelope here or some FM so I guess that's an operator sound that's one thing I also thought you don't really know where the sounds are coming from from which plugin when you choose them so you have a good selection but I don't really know where it's coming from so it would be I think it would be nice to know if it's like FM synth or sampler or whatever to know what to expect in a way or have different um, sorting options because I'm like, okay, where's like, okay, wave, yeah, that's wave. So where's my filter? Also, one thing I really like is that there's a undo function. As you can see, it's all undoable. So, what's that? Ah, my most beloved sound. I think I recorded my voice, used a 8-bit crusher or something, and I like that it's like so nicely unstable. <laughs> Fun. Um, that's the bass thing. So I can also obviously go in here and do some there's a saturator, for instance, which has a bit drastical, but you can have really nice, quick changes. I would have loved to have maybe one more effect, so you can have a reverb, delay, and a saturator or reduction or something, but probably it's um, not sure if the power, the CPU power is enough for this thing. Um, so let's say I want to uh, edit the kick drum. You can all the, the single drum sounds. You can also obviously um, edit separately. Then you see it's like here decay. Well, there's nothing coming because the sample is ended. They have a sub oscillator to it. So it has this kind of. I like this time stretching thing, it's really nice. You can change the grain size of it, it's kind of like a performance things uh, when you play live and you can also obviously record um, the movement here
Why is it not doing it? Uh, let me delete the automation. That's also really quick. Like you push the delete button and just push the the um, um, the thing you wanna the parameter. Thanks. Sorry for losing all the words. Or I delete the Hyatt very quickly. Uh, so there's all the like the copy editing, uh, copying, um, um, deleting, other pattern that's very quick and hands-on, I would say. So another thing that I thought, um, let's do a new project, um, that are a bit like, um, could, be, could be optimized for the next software version is like, there's this uh, arpeggiator. Let's go in here, and I think it's t it's not like it's only up and down and random. And I think if you look at, for instance, the Arturia key step and their options on the what you can do with a modern arpeggiator with like double notes, uh, different octaves, blah blah blah. It's like there's so many options, and I think that could be just like one nice. Uh, menu uh, that you can choose so uh, as a future update I would totally like to have that. I'm not very good in reading manuals um, so I just try what's what's hands-on and and for me the reason for this is um, I have as you can maybe see a lot of synthesizers around me and uh, everything I have to use a manual for is like a waste of time for me. So I really want things that are hands-on and where I don't have to think too much. And um, that's why um, I actually like it because it has a lot of these, like it's a lot hands-on. It's just little tiny things you can actually change probably with software update to make it even more simple or more hands-on. But there's like these little steps in between where I think like, hmm, could be a bit more like, could be quicker or could be simpler. And uh, But I think it's all software, so at the end they can change it. One thing, there's also um, on the master, if you will, like a um, master compressor. And, or two effects, two master effects. In this case, I have a compressor and a reverb now, which can be nice for, for transition effects or something like this. Or you can also obviously have a, a saturator or chorus or channel EQ. Right, so. Let's record the uh, record the automation for the filter. It has a limiter built in to save from like um, overdrive, obviously, but it's um, you can also use it to really push it hard. Uh, I haven't heard it on a big system yet, so I can't say if it's like too crazy, but uh, on headphones and stuff, it was really actually quite a nice thing to, to work with. And what I also a very nice hands on simple tool, I had to, I have to look into the menu for this, but once you get it, it's very simple. So you have these four parts here and you can just hold it and take the track to the track volume for this. Which I think is very easy and very good too. Like a lot of these things are just like hidden. You have like either shift or hold something and then tweak it, which is quite nice. A lot of compression, good. Don't like the automation anymore.
else they got here. I guess you get the idea. So in my ideal world, I would like have my life set up next to it um, and use it as a playful way to really quickly add things to a track that's running. Like in my life set, there's like a lot going on from the computer, but I'd love to add on things or jam freely to it. And um, actually there's a great machine to it. The one thing I would actually you like wish to have, so it's easy to sync with Link, Ableton, it's all fine, it's all good. And it's very quickly with the sounds and stuff. I would wish if there's kind of like a, a Ableton plug-in kind of version. So you have all the channels that are running here simultaneously seeing on your screen. So you can quickly go in and edit things on the screen. Let's say with sequences, for me, it's sometimes easier instead of doing it here. It's easier to just notch a node here and there on, on, uh, in Ableton on the computer screen. Um, so for me, it would be really handy. And then also like using sequences you have recorded here, just pull them over to another synth you're using, another plugin you're actually using to double it up or like use a different sound. Um, so that would be my wish for, for the future for this thing. Uh, but anyhow, now that it's uh, in public, I, will, I can't wait to actually use it uh, in one of my next shows and try it out how, how it feels to play with it. As a resume of the whole machine, um, what I really liked about it is it's very very hands-on. The battery actually lasts quite long if you if you charge it. It can be run just by battery. It has an internal speaker, I didn't say that, which is also quite nice when you're like with friends in the hotel room or blah 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 and you just want to show them a quick idea or do some, let's say you have a singer with you and you just want to uh, uh, play something along with him and play some chords. Um, that's very useful. Uh, I think it's a little bit heavy, but on the other hand, it also feels very sturdy, like the the whole thing feels good in the hands. I like that it has a microphone built in. I like that it has, uh, it's a lot like you touch it, you see what you're doing. It's very spontaneous and it encourages you in a nice way to just create on the fly new things that you probably wouldn't have done before. For instance, <laughs> you might laugh, but I never used the scale function in Ableton because I play keyboards, but here you kind of have to because uh, of the keypads. And uh, I found out uh, my love for some of the scales. So now I will probably use a bit more scales in the future, even in Ableton, which is quite nice. I would definitely change the arpeggiator and update that, make, um, make it more versatile and more fun to play. I think also that um, what I told you about the resampling function, it would be really nice if that's like more tight. Maybe I did something wrong, maybe it's a software update, but um, it should have no latency. Um, I hope that's somehow possible because what I actually love about it, and I'm thinking again about my life set, let's say I have something running to it and I like it, and then I quickly have a kind of like as, as if I would loop it uh, audio-wise, and then you can tweak it and have three uh, synths, synth engines free again to do something completely new with it. And then um, that that would be a function. If I, I use it a lot, I use it a lot, and I think if that's uh, that works better, that would be really nice, or a bit e easier actually also. Like I, I didn't find a way to just say like, actually have a loop you know like have this just as a loop and not only as a sample that you have to play yourself again or like program it that it's gonna be played all the time other than that it was really fun i think there's room for some improvement but uh, all in all i enjoyed it and i can't wait to use it on stage soon <laughs>